If I've learned anything in the 15 plus years that I've been making videos on YouTube, it is that the internet is almost always smarter than I am, and that is never more evident than when I make a DIY video upgrading things here on my set or doing home improvement projects as I did in my most recent videos. This video is a follow-up to my most recent garage work log, and I'm mainly here to say, you guys were right. This is a very bad idea. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Paul's Hardware store on paulshardware.net, the only official source for Paul's Hardware merchandise. Tantalizing t-shirts, brilliant beer sets, high quality hoodies, and more, all featuring the classic thumb screw for tasteful and refined viewers, or the 8-bit thumb screw for tasteful and refined viewers who hate curves. New designs are added sporadically and at random, so head over to paulshardware.net and get some of that sweet, sweet merch right now. Or not right now, after you watch the video. Either way. That's why this is so safe, Joe. See, this is very safe. The scene just needs one shake for this thing to like fall over here it, for whatever reason, and then the like the other one is tucked behind the shelf. It's it's safe. It's totally safe. Nothing. What could go wrong, Joe? Nothing. This is my main work PC that I use for shooting videos out here in my garage set. It is primarily used as a capture system. I also use it to do some live streaming sometimes, some gaming from time to time. And it has been residing back here in the corner behind my two primary 4K monitors. But I love having lots of desk space, so I've been considering moving this computer for quite some time, as long as it's not down onto the floor. And that's kind of the secondary theme of this video, is how to maximize your desk space by wall mounting a computer. It was pretty evident to most of the people who watched my garage work log that just moving this computer up onto that shelf, even though it's a very sturdy shelf, was not going to be a good solution simply because it is such a wide, such a tall, such a large chassis overall. And although I was at least marginally okay with how it was propped up there temporarily, leaning back against the wall with one of these legs tucked back behind, it was really too precarious, especially with my tendency to say, here's a temporary solution and to come back to it several months, if not a year plus later. One of the downsides to living where I live here in Southern California is that we are in an earthquake zone. So that's something that we have to be aware of when we're setting up stuff, especially if it's being wall mounted. So putting a strap around this system was one possible solution but one of the upsides is that I live close to the city of industry, which is where a lot of PC hardware manufacturers have headquarters or other locations where they have inventory. So I called in a favor this morning and I headed over to Thermaltake to pick up this case, handed off to me by Thermal Mike himself. This is the Core P3 T6 Pro, which has a very nice tempered glass panel so you can see everything inside for the build. But most importantly, this is wall mountable with a standard VESA mount. Mike was also kind enough to include one of Thermaltake's PCI Express riser cables so I can use the vertical mount for the graphics card in the build. And finally, I accepted the very timely delivery of this low-profile TV wall mount, just a very basic solution that I bought from Amazon, which has a large bracket that can mount to two separate studs and supports over 100 pounds of weight, which should be enough to hold this whole system. The Core P3 is uh, pretty narrow. Like, this is, this is kind of the housing for it. I guess this would be top side up. As a result, they're able to flat pack it, although some assembly is required. By the way, this is the Core P3 TG, which is tempered glass, um, not T, I don't know why. I said T6 because of the printing on the box. You basically have four posts that mount to the four corners like that. Those act as holders to hold this large piece of tempered glass up off of the chassis. We're gonna keep that off to the side for now. It's got a long vertical section here where you can mount fans or a radiator, probably more likely a radiator since you're not gonna have the typical airflow that you would in this case. And then there's another bracket that can stand off the front here since this is the pro version that can allow you to add another radiator or dedicated fans. Since I'm working with a large air cooler, I think we can just keep it simple and I'm not gonna be mounting too much of those things up there. But because this chassis has a little bit of width to it, there actually is some cable management uh, space back here. And then this is also where the VESA mount is, as you can hopefully see. So we'll be using that once we get the system transplanted over. After loosening these six thumb screws, we can remove this back panel. Here's where you can see that that VESA mount is not just part of the back panel, it's actually mounted to the rest of the chassis and that's nice and sturdy, so that's good because this system is gonna be fairly heavy once it's all assembled, especially with these metal posts because these are, these are pretty sturdy. These are nice, it's nice metal, but they're also pretty weighty. I'm just gonna mount some of this stuff to the case as shown in the manual. Get this screw through there. That's how the post mounts, and they have also reinforced up in the corners here where those posts mount, so again, 
you can have a pretty sturdy finished product. The remaining accessories allow you to configure this in various ways. For instance, you can horizontally mount your power supply, so like the fan faces this way. This piece here is for the vertically mounted graphics card, so I believe that mounts right there, and we are going to be using this piece. Oh, no, sorry, it mounts right here. And this is going to have a bracket for the power supply that fits down underneath it. The instructions give sort of an exploded view of how everything fits together, so it's, it's reasonable enough to look at that and figure it out. All right, we've got a couple of these things mounted. What do you call these? Accessories, brackets, holders, something like that. And I've also installed the standoffs for our motherboard tray. We do have a couple more brackets for the power supply, but it's uh, recommended in the manual that you mount these to the power supply before mounting that to the case. So we're going to move on to disassembling the existing system. It's not that heavy. All right. Thirty seven DTI. Hmm. Uh. All right, we have removed all of the components from the old case, and now we can install them in the new case. I'm going to start with the power supply because we have this Be Quiet Dark Power Pro. This is 80 plus titanium, 1000 watt power supply. Barely dusty at all because thanks to it being a high wattage unit and having zero fan mode, uh, the fan rarely ever spins on this power supply. So that's cool. That mounts from the other side. We now have a moment of truth to determine if our somewhat tall air cooler, which is also from Be Quiet, is going to fit underneath the tempered glass in this case. I think it will. Ta-da! Plenty, plenty of clearance. I can fit my finger. See? Beautiful. All right. Perfect. Ah, I got you. At this point, the transplant is largely complete. We need to consider the video card and expansion cards. Uh, before, I was rocking the RTX 3070 Ti in there because I installed it at some point. Honestly, I don't remember. I probably had a different card that had been installed in this system earlier, and I was like, I need something else, and so this is what I put in. But I was looking at my graphics cards and trying to choose one that might be a little bit of an upgrade from there, and I've settled on the RTX 4080 because now there's the 4080 Super, uh, which I also have, so if there's future benchmarking required, I'll probably be testing the 4080 Super since it's a much more practical $1,000 card. 4080's still a good card, it was just never a good price, but it will be a nice step up in terms of performance from that 3070 Ti, and it also, you know, has that, that cool look of the NVIDIA Founders Edition graphics cards as well. We did need to connect up one more PCI Express graphics power connector to the power supply because we need three of those instead of two for the 4080. But the other thing over here that some of you guys might have noticed already, especially if you're watching us uh, set up for the vertical, vertically mounted GPU is, hey Paul, what about those expansion cards, like the capture cards that you use pretty regularly? Like, don't you still want to have those connected? And isn't that kind of hard to do with a vertically mounted GPU? Yes. The answer is absolutely yes. And I totally thought of this beforehand. I This is all... Very well planned ahead, let me assure you. Okay, to be perfectly honest, um, I, I almost thought like, oh no, we need to just remove this and not do the vertically mounted GPU and do standard mounting. But I think, I think I can actually still fit stuff. Remember, Threadripper CPUs have many, many PCI Express lanes, which means that lots of these slots down here still have full 
uh, by 16 connectivity. So we're not too concerned about where the GPU gets installed. In fact, this was where the top capture card was already installed before in the top slot. And I had the GPU, I think in the third slot down there. So by leaving this capture card in the top slot, we can still access the video in and out. And why is this sounding familiar? I'm trying to figure out a way to install a capture card and still have access to the video in and outs. This is like Joe's build. It's just like Joe's build that we did recently. I'm gonna see if I can support this a little bit more. This is actually a rod support that came uh, with one of our test beds over there. Although now that I'm setting this up, this might go right across the video in and out. So that's, maybe that won't work. Speaking of Joe's uh, PC build, which um, you guys should check out if you haven't watched the videos for that, it was a pretty epic one that uh, had some, some fails along the way that we had to fix. But one of them was getting some PCI Express risers uh, to see if we could move some of his expansion cards around. So I still have those. This is a by four one, so that should work just fine for our 4K60 Pro capture card. This will allow us to connect this up to probably the lowest PCIe slot here, and then hopefully have this as close to the motherboard as we can get it, maybe in the second or third expansion bracket down there. And then this is the metal bracket that comes with the case for vertically mounted GPUs. This is the riser cable that uh, Thermal Mike brought out for me to use this morning. And I think this has enough length that we can mount that down there to the bottom to give ourselves three slot, spot, slot spacing for our graphics card. And then still have this cable come up there. I hope, we'll see. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Maybe we'll just remove this whole vertical mount thing and go back to normal mounting, I don't know. Find out right now. I need to get another hand down there, but I can't. There we go. This would need to go like here. Ah, uh, yeah. It's fine, Joe. Look, there's plenty of room. Okay, well, uh, uh, we've been on a voyage of discovery and we've discovered that we probably could actually get this all installed, even with the expansion cards the way we wanted to. Let me remove this top one. Yeah. Even that I think would be a conflict. We would need to swap this out for, um, this is the older 4K60 Pro from Elgato. They actually, the newer one is a lower profile. So if we have one of the newer ones, it would probably fit in there. But then the conflict becomes this, large air cooler and a video card that has this needs uh, the 12VH power dongle adapter to fit in there as well. And uh, obviously that's not gonna fit under there. So going to plan B, or maybe it was plan A originally before we thought, oh, maybe we'll do it vertically. Uh, we're just gonna remove this support here, rotate this back to normal, and we'll do normal expansion cards facing that way. With the expansion slots reconfigured, we have fit everything back in pretty much as it was in the previous case, and it's uh, looking pretty good. I haven't done like the best cable management ever. I tried to tie stuff down and use some zip ties here and there. I haven't like gone with cable combs everywhere or anything like that, because the goal for this build, which is actually making me happy that we're not going with the vertically mounted GPU, was for it to be more function than form. And of course, a vertically mounted GPU is almost always uh, form over function unless you're like trying to fit it in a mini ITX build or something like that But everything is wired up hooked up connected up before we wall mount this uh, We're gonna do what we should always do with the system that you've just built before you like do something that's hard to Reverse like mounting it to a wall and plug it in and see if it works We also get to see if Joe makes some funny noises again as I as I do something like this All right. Yeah is that more or less precarious than it was before? I'm mostly just doing it this way because this is where all the plugs are. Let's give her the old power on test. Maybe I screwed up the front panels. Oh, there's a power plug there. Oh dear. Maybe I screwed something else up. Oh. Oh, that's really weird. The power supply was off. The lights that you saw light up when we uh, first connected everything was uh, just, I believe, residual power from the power supply, which is kind of crazy. Big capacitors in there can store power for, for a bit. The plus side, 
switching the power switch on has caused the system to boot up. So that makes me happy. Uh, we're booted up. Uh, haven't installed GPU drivers yet or updated, so we'll worry about that later. Or maybe it's doing it right now. There it is, there we go. Even GPU drivers. All right, shutting down. So I've busted out my wall mount bracket and I've been presented with yet another dilemma. This comes in two pieces for the actual wall bracket and as you can see, it's too wide. It extends out beyond the edges of the case. I already know where the studs are over here. They are 16 inches on center, which is standard stud spacing here in the US. And the one I'm gonna need to mount to on the right there is actually pretty close to the AC unit. So I'm considering that too. And I basically have three choices. I can either use the bracket as is and have some unsightly edges of the bracket sticking out on either side of the case. I could go shopping for a new bracket that is not as wide as the case. The case is about 20 inches wide, just FYI. Or we could go for option three, hack this thing apart with my angle grinder. I think I'll go for option three. After getting that plate securely mounted to the wall, it actually wasn't too difficult to mount the case to it. It is a bit heavy and awkward, but after I got the top half of the mounts hooked on, the bottom half just sort of snapped into place, and then I mounted the tempered glass panel. I almost forgot to include the little rubber grommets for the tempered glass panel, which I think you definitely should be including because you don't want the glass right up against those metal standoff studs because they're pretty heavy duty. But after popping those on, I was able to mount the tempered glass panel, get the system booted up, and then finish things off off, at least for now with a bit of wire loom here at the back to do a little bit of cable management. This isn't perfect. I am going to be updating this. I might consider making something that looks a little bit more permanent like that's actually mounted to the wall just a channel running down or something like that. And I of course have a bunch of cable management and stuff to do still for my main desks, which is another project for another day. Overall though, I'd say I'm really happy with how this turned out. The system doesn't have like a lot of lighting going on. There's just sort of some native stuff on the uh, expansion cards and the motherboard. The right side over here, which Thermaltake has set up for like water cooling radiators and stuff is a little bit empty, but honestly, the main focus here was to get this system wall mounted and more secure and still be usable and functional for all the stuff that I use it for. It is kind of fun when I run into things I need to work around like that uh, bracket and you can kind of see if you go all the way to the side, the raw ends of that bracket sticking out just a little bit, but I am glad I made the decision to cut that shorter because I think it looks a lot better uh, without that sticking out on the sides. And now I guess my main dilemma is gonna be like where I position my lights so I don't get a massive reflection in that thing like you can see with this China ball up here, but, but I'm gonna figure all that stuff out in the future. I wanna close by saying a big thank you to Thermaltake for providing the Core P3 TG Pro over here. There are other cases that can be wall mounted, but none of them have quite the track record that Thermaltake has with the P3 series. Let's end with some closing reminders though. Check out my store at paulsharbread.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and more. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. That always helps me out a lot. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wanna see more videos like this coming at you real soon. I'm gonna be continuing to improve my workspace and area back here, while I also continue to do an updated how to build a PC series that's in the works as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see you all in the next one.